Hey everyone, good morning. Hey, how's it going? I'm Todd Knock, professional comic book artist. Welcome to my uh, YouTube art live stream. So I know we've been doing a lot of post-it note illustrations here during the past previous six weeks. If you weren't here for yesterday's live stream, I announced a new content uh, change in the, in the lineup. Uh, we're going to do post-it notes only on Mondays and Fridays, and then Tuesday through Thursday, we're going to do a three-part penciling, inking, and coloring video series. Uh, right now on sketch covers, I have a handful of these, so we'll 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 I'll, we will work on sketch covers. You draw on whatever you have. If you don't have a sketch cover, that's okay. Draw on your sketchbook, your notepad, whatever you got. Draw on whatever paper is appropriate for you to draw on. Now, a lot of people ask, where do you get these sketch covers? You can, I get mine at the comic book shop. A lot of comic book shops sell these, so check your local comic shops, call them up. Many of them are still open. Many have curbside pickup or will ship to you during this uh, COVID-19 stay at home sort of time. Many comic shops are still in business. They need your business. If you want to get these, a lot of them run for about five bucks each, about cover price. Some might be a little more expensive if they're out of print, then they're a little bit more rare, so they're a little more valuable um, if they're older. But um, but yeah, so that's a good place. And a lot of comic shops have eBay stores, so look on eBay as well and support your comic book uh, stores as best you can because they, they need your help. And these are a lot of fun on. It's really cool to do an original piece of art on an actual comic book cover. So um, so that's what we're going to do today. But before we get too far into this, I want to let you know, as I teased yesterday, I had a special plan for today, or I, I was going to be making, I'm making a guest appearance today. Uh, three weeks ago, I was on the Marvel social media accounts doing an art live stream. Maybe you saw me draw this Wolverine on the Marvel uh, YouTube channel and on their Facebook. It was a simulcast over their Marvel's YouTube uh, Facebook and Twitter is the same live stream broadcast on all three of those platforms. So I did this Wolverine and then we did a follow up uh, Instagram uh, live stream on Marvel's Instagram right afterwards. So today I'll be drawing Captain Marvel, uh, the current Captain Marvel design for Marvel's art live stream on the Marvel accounts. So make sure you go to Marvel's YouTube or Marvel's Facebook pages today at 12 noon Pacific or 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I think that would be maybe about 7 p.m. Greenwich time. So if you're international, you should be able to calculate your time zone from there. So come join me on the Marvel uh, accounts for another live stream. You're going to get two full art live streams from me today. The one we're about to do right now and then Captain Marvel today in about three hours from right now. So, um, and if you're watching this on replay, you can probably find my Captain Marvel uh, on the YouTube uh, on the Marvel YouTube page uh, in their in their archive as well. So, but right now we're going to focus on drawing Batman. So we've got this Batman sketch cover. We're going to draw Batman today. So we're going to do full figure. We're going to do head, shoulders, arms, body, maybe definitely some legs. Maybe we'll even get the feet in there. It all depends on how we build this pose. So you're welcome to draw along. Use whatever tools or paper you have handy. I'll try to uh, respond to questions and comments as I go, but it's time to draw. So let's flip the camera around. Let's get to work. All right, just a little readjust of the rig here. Easy for me to say. Come on, rig, what's your problem? Oh, we good? We're still there? All right, good, 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 good. Readjust the lighting. All right, so we're just gonna do the pencil art today. So we're just gonna sketch things out and uh, try to do some somewhat tight pencils. All right, so um, so earlier this morning, just to warm up, I, I was doing some different Batman thumbnail poses. Just some quick rough ideas of what, what just kind of getting in the Batman vibe, Batman mode, and I might utilize some aspects of maybe one of, or two of these uh, sketches here. So doing these little quick thumbnail sketches, just real quick, real fast, not a lot of detail, uh, can be a real great warm up and get, help kind of help clear out the cobwebs from the brain, kind of give you some ideas of what you want to do before you commit to actual doing the artwork here. So um, we're just going to, I'm going to use my Pilot Eno color pencil. Um, it's a 
0.7 lead with a HB blue, light blue lead just to get my, my structure going. So I'm going to rough in the head. So I'm going to move a little fast here. So if it's a little too fast for you, please come back for the replay and you can pause and play as needed as, as you go. So I have the head to the neck, to the shoulders, the trapezius muscles, the collarbone. Now this light blue might be a little too light here, but once we get into the graphite pencils, it's really going to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier to see. So kind of get his back, he's kind of, he's kind of arced this way, his face is kind of looking off that way, something's going on off, off panel here to the right. Start to draw on some shoulders there. You know what, I've, I'm going to take another stab at this. I made him a little too large. He's not going to fit on here so well. So this is why we do kind of a rough sketch at first, because if it's not fitting the way we want, just erase and readjust. So I'm going to make him a little smaller so we can fit more Batman on here. So I still like that pose I was heading towards. Just needed more room for the arm, otherwise there would be it'd be far too crowded. So that's why we kind of start light and then um, and then darken as we go once we realize things are heading in the direction we want to go in. So we're gonna pull that thigh forward to the knee and then down. So it's kind of crouched on top of a building here. Batman's a bit of a wide character, not as maybe as wide and bulky as Superman, but he's got some bulk for just a normal human dude. At least that's the way he's kind of developed in the past many years. Kind of a bigger, bulkier, gruffier kind of guy, not the kind of the slick version of the 70s and 80s, which is the one I grew up on as a, as a kid. Bring that other leg forward. So you're just going to make a lot of adjustments here. Okay, so from that shoulder, bring the upper arm down to the elbow and then the forearm. Really got some foreshortening going here with the knee, thigh, and then the calf and shin kind of overlap. Create some nice distance. So the other thigh down to the, the knee. And then down to the lower part of the leg, calf muscle down to shin. Going to hunch him a bit more here. So once I kind of get the basics in, I can just then start flushing things out more and more. There's lats there, down the side. More detail in the chest here. Lead broke there. Click, click, click. There we go. Got to get refocused. Just sculpting. This is just sculpting, sculpting, sculpting. Bit by bit by bit by bit. Start throwing some bat ears on there. I 
Going to kind of change the angle of his uh, lower leg here for a little more dynamic movement. Okay, so this arm here is, here's his shoulder, and then his upper arm is tucked back here, and then his low forearm comes down here. And then a fist, just kind of blocking in the shapes, just block in those shapes. Start to work in that utility belt. other arm going here. So just really a lot of uh, breaking down of the shapes here. There's a lot going on. Um, so um, what I'm going to do here is uh, get these shapes going and then once I uh, start going in on the uh, tight pencils here hopefully I can explain a bit more of my process so right now there's a lot of thinking going on my brain is like working double time on uh, trying to get these shapes just right so a lot of the Choices of anatomy here are based on years of practice, study, developing my style, practice, my approach to my art, which is essentially what the style is, is our approach to how we make our lines and our shapes. I think I'd seen someone ask, uh, is there a reason why I change my grip? I go from this to this to the back to this to this. This is the proper way to hold, hold a pencil as we're taught in school. This is the improper way I held my pencil as a child in first grade. This was just how I wrote. So when I do this to this, this is just going from proper way to improper way because this feels comfortable to me, but this feels comfortable to me comfortable to me now as well. So there's no reason why, it's just uh, uh, an automatic thing I do. Oftentimes I switch to my improper way of holding a pencil uh, to get the right angle that I need. Like oh, I'm, I'm changing the angle of, of the pencil that I'm dr drawing with to the paper I'm drawing on. So I, I change change the, the, the way I hold the pencil because it feels comfortable to me. Uh, so it's not anything that's technically a, a trick or a, a secret um, way of holding the pencil for more accuracy. It's just a bad habit I learned at age six and, and just it stuck with me all my life. Um, though I have learned the proper way to hold a pencil, as you can see I'm doing here, but there's no real benefit um, other than it's just my personal way that feels comfortable to me. Um, based on a life, <laughs> lifelong bad habit. So um, yeah, it's not anything that they taught in like art school, like, oh, hold your pencil like this to achieve maximum uh, control in, in drawing in a certain technique or anything like that. It's just, just my little bad habit from when I was six years old. The teachers tried to, you know, 
get me to stop doing that. And I tried and it took a while to actually finally learn. Um, but it's just kind of my default. It's, it's just the way I kind of held my pencil. Um, and just kind of see and here I switch because I'm changing the angle. And so it fe just feels comfortable. So that's the wall. That's all. A little more detail there in the hand. Start to rough in more of those fingers of that fist. This glove. All right. Start to tighten up this face here a bit. Soon we'll be busting into Uh, graphite pencil. We're going to switch to graphite pencil to tighten up the details here, which will then set us up for inks. Alright, so I've got just about everything where I want it. I do need to keep in mind his cape. Just gonna drape down. I have some building here. Bring this up over the shoulder. And the cape kind of flowing behind him here. Start to structure out the head a little bit more as we've done a bajillion times. Well, at least 30 times here the past month. The past six weeks, I guess. We're into week seven now here of this COVID-19 stay-at-home season. But the same rules apply. The center line, eye line, nose line, mouth line. Get those neck muscles. Now I'm angling the head here. So we've got him hunched down. He's angled for more dramatic look. Now my camera is at a little bit of an angle here. So you're kind of looking at it from down looking up. So the head might look a little smaller on screen than what it looks like in real life. I don't know if I can get this more of a straight up and down shot. So you can see the more actual proportions. So let's see, just a little more breakdown here. Eyebrows, mouth, scally mouth, some cheekbones, jawline, chin. Double check some of my math here before I start to commit. We might pull, go back to the non-repro photo blue pencil here at times just to kind of maybe certain times I need to double check my math. But um, I think we got enough. Oh, let me kind of work in the bat symbol here. Going to be kind of drawing, I think, what's more the current Batman uniform, the kind of the black and gray. He's had so many uniforms now, so many costumes and designs. In the comics, the movies, the cartoons, and then toys. Don't even get started with the toys. Jungle Safari Batman, Arctic Batman, Deep Sea Batman, Mars Rover Batman, 
Pastry Chef Batman, Chimney Sweep Batman, NFL Superstar Batman, which is one of my favorites when, when Batman played for the um, Indianapolis Colts. Oh my gosh, what an awesome season that was. That didn't really happen. That, that's a joke. That's a joke, everybody. Batman never played for the Indianapolis Colts. But if you've seen the toys for the past 25, 30 years, he has had a bunch of different costumes for every situation. Okay. No, I will not finish this all today. Today is just the pencil, pencil artwork. Then we'll be here tomorrow to do the inks. Then we'll be back on Thursday to do the colors. All right, so now that I've got the, the, the pencil lines done, I'm gonna come in with uh, an HB lead pencil here, uh, art pencil, and I'm gonna to start to uh, put in the, the de more detail, put in the finer details. So that y'all can see crisp, crisper, cleaner pencil lines than what I usually do in these live streams. So I'm gonna to try to pencil as tightly as I can. If you weren't here for the top of the show, I will be doing another live stream on Marvel's social media accounts today at uh, 12 noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern on the Marvel YouTube page simulcast on their Facebook and um, Inst uh, and uh, Twitter as well. You can come watch me draw Captain Marvel. I'm going to do a full figure Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers. So you can come and watch me there as well. I will not be live streaming from here at that time. Go to the Marvel social media accounts. And that's today, Tuesday, April 20, what is today, the 28th? April 28th at uh, 12 noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. That would be 7 p.m. Greenwich time if you're watching internationally. You can push in a little closer here so you can see the details of the face. Actually, that eye is set a little low. I want to raise that up just a smidge. Using the Enoch click eraser there, E-K-N-O-C-K. So people are asking yesterday, what, what uh, click eraser do I use? Should be able to find that online. I think I got mine at an art supply store here in Southern California. Down to the nose. And we just pull that mask right across that nose line. And then down. Drop some shadows under these eyes. So when, uh, when I'm spotting blacks for the shadows, I'm keeping in mind each angle, just as we do in the post-it notes, it's the same here with doing a full figure. I'm keeping in mind the angles of the face, the jawline, the chin, the orbital cavity of the, uh, of the eye, the brow, the forehead, each angle is its own shape. 
And so I consider where do I want there to be black and where do I want there to be open space? Open space would be where the light is hitting more than likely. And this can always change depending on the, the light source. So you got to learn your shapes. Learn the shapes of your heads, your muscles, all the body parts. It's a lot to learn, but you know, it's just come, it's part and parcel of becoming a professional comic book artist. All right, so since I know where his entire shoulder is here, I can put the uh, folds of his cape as it arcs around and wrinkles from pulling from, from his collarbone over his shoulders and then down. So I keep that in mind. And I'm having the, sh the cape come over his shoulder, over his upper arm. And then I can wrinkle it as desired and still show the form underneath. I like to study the wrinkles of, of cloth and clothing and stuff. That's important study to do to try to achieve the effects that I desire. Gonna put some dark here on his shoulder, following along with the wrinkles. Could even do some, uh, do a little fade like that. I know a lot of people want to know how the approach to drawing a fade. Keep in mind what you are rendering. What is the angle? What is the shape that is underneath? It's not a bunch of lines just going every which way. I like to pull towards the light because we're creating a gradation from dark to light. See, back in the olden days of comics, before computer coloring, the printing process could only see black and white. The, the printing camera could only see black and, and white when it came to like comic book art. It was not photo, they were not photographs. Uh, it was a, a printing process called the four color process. That's why you would see all these little dots to make up the colors, it was only four colors, black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And those they would use uh, a series of these dots to create all sorts of other colors, pink, skin tone, green, purple. And so, um, so the, art could only, the camera could only see black and white. So if we wanted a gray, or if the artist at that time, I should say I wasn't really working back in those days, I was still a kid. Um, and heck, they were doing this long before I was even born. Uh, they would they would have to use line work to create a, the, uh, an illusion of gray. So um, that is where the cross hatching comes into play. Is you are creating an illusion of gray. Start to work in the bottoms of his pectoral muscles here. See, I have to figure out how this shoulder fits together with the cape. Because the cape is kind of coming down, but arcing up over his shoulder. So we see the shoulder muscle. So I have to consider each section, each shape and direction. And that's where I want my cross hatching to go. So it informs on the shape that I'm rendering. 
and that's what makes it look, you know, legit, is that it's, it's, there's a reason for them, you know, it's a reason for these lines. They're not just there haphazardly. If they're there haphazardly, then it doesn't quite look right. They're not achieving the job that these lines are supposed to do. Start to work on this bicep over here. Pulling down to the forearm. So I know that shoulder muscle is under there, and so it starts to peek out down here. Then we have the tricep over here. Pulling down to the elbow. Then the forearm. It's going to kind of foreshorten a bit. See these lines here, they had a reason. It's to create the roundedness of that bicep pulling down to where his arm connects to the forearm. And the outer part of his forearm here. There's a lot to learn with our anatomy. There's a lot to learn, and there's I think there's always still more that we can learn, more that we can study, more that we can seek to learn differently, improve, look, find a new, fresh way to, to draw. So always study your anatomy. There's always something new, new, new secrets to unlock. But Study it as much as you can so it becomes second nature. You want it to be muscle memory. All right, so then we got the four, uh, the fist in the foreground here. Let's just kind of re-angle the board here so we can uh, get a good angle on on how to draw this fist. So I've roughed in each of the knuckles, and the knuckles arc. It's important to note, the knuckles are not straight across. If you make a fist and you look at your knuckles, there's an arc. Even if it's a slight arc, it's, it's still something of an arc there. I mean, we can manipulate our hand to make it the knuckles to where they all kind of line up. But I, I think a more natural look is for the, um, for the, the knuckles to arc. Even design-wise, it looks more appealing than just straight on, flat, all the knuckles on the same line. But I think if we arc from index finger up to the ring finger, then down to the, uh, I'm sorry, index finger up to the middle finger, down to the ring finger, down to the pinky, creates a more, creates a little more, more natural flow. And design-wise, it gives your viewer just a little something more to look at. Let's just have the uh, little inner part of the palm here, the this part going on right here. The great thing about drawing hands is that you always have reference there with you. I will make my hands into whatever shapes I'm needing to draw and use my own hands as reference. It's like, wait, how does how do the fingers look when they're folded like this or outstretched like that? I'm gonna add some dark sections to his gloves here. As the fingers overlap. So even with the fingers, every section is a is an angle, is a plane. And I think of these angles and planes all throughout the figure. Every, even, even the wrinkles, even the wrinkles are different angles and planes. 
and and they have to be treated with that mentality to give your character a, a solid place in the uh, environment that they are occupying. So these are always things you have to think about. It's all, it, and that's where it becomes second nature. You practice it to where it becomes second nature. You've done it so many times. I've drawn so many thousands upon thousands of drawings in my lifetime that has helped me learn the skills that I know and I continue to study and uh, develop my skills in new ways, different ways. All right, so this is what we've got going so far. Let's pull the camera back here just a little bit to see our progress. Batman in one arm. Let's keep going. Let's keep rocking this. We should get all the pencils done here in this one live stream. It'll be a little bit longer. We're about half an hour in. But we should be able to get all the pencils in here. A little more shadow on this strand. Maybe cast a little shadow underneath the cape where it overlaps his arm. All right, now we have this knee up here in the foreground. I want to deal with this knee. Knees are very challenging. They're a very odd shape and they change shape so drastically whether the leg is extended or bent. So knees take a lot of study. So start with that baseball shape and then you start to add the Knees are just weird. Knees are probably one of the weirdest shapes, shapes on our body as far as my experience in drawing them has gone. It's so weird how they, they change shapes so drastically from my experience, from my perception. I'll look at knees and it's like, ah, oh, man, what is that shape supposed to be? It's so hard. And some wrinkles here at the joints. I like putting wrinkles in at the joints. I think it just gives, it's just a fun extra detail. Then we got that shin bone. Kind of runs right down there. Calf muscle. And this thigh cuts back to his um, pelvic area. Kind of get his backside there a little bit. So, so a lot of that, that thigh is being hidden behind this part of his shin that's overlapping it. We can work on some utility belt pouches. So much fun to draw. To start with some rectangles, some turn them into boxes, and then start adding some flaps. Little underarm shadow there. Pouches wrapping around to the back side of his costume. A little midsection uh, um, wrinkles to his uh, uniform as he bends. Curve around, curve, curve, curve. 
keeping in mind the curves. Let's work more on his midsection here. Let's see, we'll bring in the center of his pectoral muscles there. We'll get to that bat here momentarily. Start working on these abs here. This belt is so big and chunky that it covers up the bottom abs. We at least see the top two sets. I'd say of, of the six abs that, that Batman has, I'd say these are definitely the top two, for sure. And that was a very dad joke, I do apologize. But I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I know you come for the art, but please stay for the dad jokes. I try to keep them few and far between, but they do slip out every now and again. Some more pouches going in on this side. Probably add even more detail when we do the inks. And then the belt buckle is hidden over here behind this, this knee and shin. Getting all up in a business. And then the wrinkles. You actually came for the dad jokes, but, but you stayed for the art. <laughs> right on. Right on. I'm glad I'm able to achieve both for you then. Come for whatever you want, stay for whatever you want. Just glad you're all here. Some wrinkles where the thigh meets the pelvic area. Cast a little shadow underneath that pouch. And start to work on this, this leg here. Nice big beefy legs, did not skip leg day. Good job, Bruce. So I have the inner part of the thigh here. That kind of connects to the knee, and then you have the, the quad here. I know that's the name of this muscle here on top, is the quad. And some of these, all these other muscles, I don't, I don't remember the names. I think I learned the, the names in my life drawing class all those years ago, but I don't remember them all. I remember watching, Stan Lee did a series of videos with like artists like Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, uh, Rob Liefeld. I watched those as a young artist trying to get good at art to, to break into comics. And Jim Lee, in that video, it stuck with me all this time, said, you got to know how to draw the muscles, but you don't have to know the names of the muscles to be able to draw them. And I guess I kind of took that to heart. Some wrinkles here at the knees. And you can find those old uh, Stan Lee videos. I think it's, they're, it's called Stan Lee the Comic Book Greats. And I think there was like a dozen videos that they sold back in, on video cassette back in the 1990s. And I think they're all here on YouTube. I think someone posted them. It might even be on like a Stan Lee account or something like that, Stan Lee channel. Um, is there a reason why I'm using the wooden pencil instead of the mechanical pencil? Uh, yeah, I just like the, the feel and the flow of the, the wooden pencil. I, I thought it would show up nicely here on, on this, uh, this, this uh, illustration. Yeah, I have all sorts of pencils. You know, I'm not limited just to my 
trusty, rusty Kurat Uni Kuratoga mechanical pencil with 0.3 HB lead. I'm not, I'm not restricted just to using this one. I'll use all sorts of pencils. We were using my Pilot Eno color or Pilot Color Eno light blue pencil earlier. I have a red one here that I did these uh, Batman thumbnail sketches this morning before the live stream. So uh, yeah, I use all sorts of pencils. I love all sorts of tools. Start to work in the boot here. Let's see, does he have any details on his boots? I need to pull up my reference. Where's my Google? Come here, Google. What do I have? Uh, Batman DC Comics image search. Just double checks. Uh, here we go. This is okay. No seams on the boots. We'll utilize some aspects of this. Oh, one thing I forgot to do was where's my blue pencil here? Got to put these little. Um, Bat blade thingies. On the outside of his forearm. Thought something was missing there. What else? What else? What else? Okay, and then for his boots, let's start adding some dark here. Now I, I like to go put it run a dark shadow right down the center here. A little bit here on the inside, right there at the calf, and underneath, kind of pulling down towards the ankle. I can just fill all this in black. Just an indication of black. Actually, you know, if I were penciling this just, you know, here in the studio, not on a live stream, I, I might not even fill all these places in black. I just put little X's in because I know I'm going to come in and fill that black. But here for the sake of the live stream, for your benefit, I'm filling in all these place, places black so you can really see how it looks in pencil. But when I'm home alone by myself drawing, sometimes I don't even bother to fill in the blacks because I know what it will look like in my head so I can... Uh, just do that, handle that when I go to the inks. Do the same for this leg here. So just keeping in mind the curve, the curve. How is that shape pulling? How do I want to translate that shape? How, do, how am I communicating? Okay, let's get this other arm going. So this upper arm here is really tucked in, really close to, to Batman. So we're going to have that pretty shadowed out. This pencil is getting a little dull, so fortunately I have a second one already sharpened up, so we don't even have to slow our roll. Got to keep the pencil sharp. Especially when we're doing the, uh, the tight lines. When oh, I start to finish Batman's face here, poor guy doesn't have a mouth yet. Let's get that mouth going while the pencil's crisp and sharp. I went to school with a crisp and sharp. She was a really, really cool gal. Another dad joke. Another dad joke. I did not go to school with a girl named Crispin Sharp. But it sounds like a name, doesn't it? Hey, it's Crispin. Hey, Crispin. Crispin Sharp. I 
Are you ready for the test in geometry? And his glove, do do do, around and down. Remember, I'm keeping in mind the shape. In fact, where's my blue pencil? I need to. The shape of the forearm. I've worked in all the. Now I've seen. I can see the muscles in my mind here. I'm want to rough them in here to. Kind of help illustrate. I keep in mind how the line comes across and then curves. There's a curvature to his forearm. So I want to keep these things in mind. Actually, I do want to. Tighten up these, this fist here, the shapes, so that I can get a little more accuracy in the graphite pencils. Again, we're going to arc those knuckles, index finger up to the middle finger, down to the ring finger, and then down to the pinky. So it creates an arc like that, up and down. Meaty parts of his palm. A little wrist bone thingy, and don't forget the little fin forearm fins. Hope everyone's having a good time. If you're drawing along, right on. Thanks for participating. If you're just here to watch, so glad you're here watching. I hope you're having a good time just watching hanging out. Um, if you're having fun here, join me, and if you missed the top of the show and the second announcement I made earlier, I will be on Marvel's uh, social media accounts today. I'll be on their the Marvel YouTube live stream today at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. That's 12 noon Pacific. I believe that's 7 p.m. Greenwich Time, for those of you internationally. So I'll be on there. I'll be a guest star, guest star on their social media, and I'll be doing a full figure drawing of Captain Marvel on uh, the Marvel live stream. So come join me there today, please, please. If you got the time, come. Uh, if you can't make it, it will still be on the Marvel YouTube channel. I did Wolverine for them three weeks ago, and they invited me back to come do another live stream. So I'm very honored that they would ask me back so so soon. And I'd love it if y'all can join me there as well. So, so two full art live streams from me today. Putting the darker sculpting of his forearm muscles on the bottom side because the light would probably be hitting from above. Put some wrinkles there at the wrist. Love my wrinkles. A little cross hatching here on the brown, or not the brown, the gray part. Let's add some shadows to the black parts of his glove here. We're going to put full black here at the uh, where the knuckles bend towards the fist. A 
Now, so that Marvel live stream will be just in, a, in about two hours from now. And if you're watching this on replay, you can probably go find it uh, as a replay on the Marvel YouTube. Um, YouTube Marvel YouTube channel. Just search Todd Knock Captain Marvel. We're drawing Captain Marvel with uh, live with Todd Knock would probably be the right title to search if you're watching this on replay and you want to see how that Captain Marvel turned out. And my my Wolverine I did three weeks ago is still on the Marvel YouTube channel as well, so you can watch that there. Some rendering there. How do I determine where I put the shadows? Uh, two basic rules of thumb is light source. One I consider the light source coming from above. So whatever is furthest away from the light will be dark. Whatever's closest to the light would have more would be more open. And then uh, I consider then the shape of what I'm illustrating. So each mus muscle grouping or muscle grouping, if you're Sean Connery. Uh, again, dad jokes. Um, each muscle grouping will then determine the the shape of that shadow as well. So that's how that's that's those are the two rules of thumb that I use. Uh, two of the most basic things I think about is light source and then the shape. And that's why we, I, we have to study our life drawing, study our figure anatomy so that we can learn the shapes. And then how do those shapes change from being drawn at different angles, from being drawn uh, in different positions? Because when you're drawing comics, the characters move in all sorts of different directions and different angles especially superheroes, because Spider-Man swings at a bajillion different ways. I mean, there's just so many different ways we can frame a shot, pose a character, and um, the, um, and, and, and cut a camera angle that that's going to change <laughs> how we draw things. I mean, it's like an infinite infinite number of ideas, infinite number of, of patterns that we can work in. I chose to draw Batman from this angle in this pose. And this is just one of an infinite number of choices I could make in how to draw Batman. We'll just do a big solid black bat here. Just kind of just rough in some graphite here just to see how the black bat would look. All right, now we want to work in just some of the cape here. I have some dark folds in the cape behind him, so it really allows him to kind of frames Batman. These dark shadows help give the positive space more pop. I'm going to kick the cape over this way. Just 
Drop those heavy black shadow wrinkles inside the cape as it pulls from his shoulder down. Okay, that'll work for now. Let's uh, grab the uh, my triangle here. We're just going to throw in a, uh, the ledge that he's standing on. I'm just going to kind of fake the perspective here because we're just needing a little bit of the building here. But I've drawn buildings in perspective so many, many, many times, probably thousands of times, that I kind of know some... I can kind of eyeball it because I've done it a bajillion times. I went from thousands of times now to a bajillion of times and we'll have like this one ledge here. Let's throw some separate bricks on here. One row, two row, three row. And then uh, Kind of angle the perspective here a little bit. So those that, those two bricks, and this one brick, and then these two bricks, and then that one brick right there, and then these two bricks. We can't see that row now anymore. So, and then this brick, and then that brick, and then that brick. Add some gritty texture to the mortar here look at make it look the bricks and the mortar look a bit weathered And the other leg kind of fades off onto the other part of the ledge. Um, maybe we'll kick a bit of ledge over off on this side because he's up on these Gotham buildings, which are all these different buildings and different, you know, different heights, different angles. Just kind of create a sense of rooftop for him, for him to be standing on. Maybe it's a bit more shadowed over here, so we'll just indicate some shadow for the inks tomorrow, kind of fading out. Create some depth there. And maybe another building behind him here that we'll just have completely blacked out. As a framing device behind him. So let's just put X's there so I remember to go completely black. When we do inks tomorrow. The inking video is tomorrow, 9 a.m. here on my YouTube channel, so please come back to join me tomorrow as we tackle the inks. And then we'll do colors, probably Copic marker colors, um, on Thursday at 9 a.m. And that's 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, 4 p.m. Greenwich.
Maybe a little bit of building over here. Down, over, down, up. Over, and back that way. And we'll fill these all in black. It'll be a nice solid black tomorrow. This is just an indication of what I need to do there. So he's up on top of a building. Just to kind of tighten things up here a little bit. Just kind of just kind of double check things here, add a few more details. some of the hatching here through this leg just to keep things consistent. Oh, and then there are some seams. Let me go back to my Google reference and find some of the seams they used on Batman nowadays. Uh, you know, maybe not so much. Maybe we can go seamless. We'll go seamless on this one. And if I decide to go do different, I'll, I, we can do that in the inks tomorrow. So let's pull the camera back here a little bit so you can see the entirety of what we've worked on today. I'll have a shot of this on my Instagram here in a little bit. Let me add my name to this. We'll just do my little last name. Then we'll add the date on Thursday when this is completely done. So this is just stage one. Go ahead and put the year there since we know it's 2020. I don't foresee not finishing this here this year because it should be done this week. All right, let's flip the camera around here and we can uh, wrap up today's live stream. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Here is the finished pencils. I'll have a shot of this on my Instagram later on today. So do follow me on that. I have all my social media, all my social media links are listed below. So um, we'll do the uh, inks tomorrow. Um, and, uh, and then we'll do colors on Thursday. So join me here tomorrow, 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific, that's uh, 12 noon central. And um, yeah, we'll continue with Batman tomorrow. Today, later today, here in the next maybe hour and a half, two hours, I will be over on the Marvel YouTube channel. So come join me on Marvel, and I'm going to be doing a full figure drawing of Captain Marvel for the Marvel art live stream. Not here, 
but at the Marvel YouTube channel. So just search Marvel here on YouTube. You should be able to find them pretty easy. And um, yeah, we'll hang out there and do some more drawing. So gang, I gotta get ready for that live stream. So it's good hanging out with you. I'll see you again real soon. Um, actually, hopefully I'll see you again here in just about an hour and a half, two hours from now. And uh, then I'll see you back here. I'll see you back here tomorrow morning uh, for more Batman. So gang, I hope you're doing well. Stay safe, stay healthy during this COVID-19 season. And um, yeah, so that's about it. Till I see you tomorrow, I'm Todd Knock. Keep on drawing, keep having fun.